I don't see it yet. Okay, and we're live. Uh, we live stream this as well. So many things we're learning today. So if for some reason you can't make it on a Thursday, although there's really no excuse, to be honest with you. Um, you could always watch on our YouTube channel, which is Adorama TV. So you can get there by going to youtube.com slash Adorama TV. Um, or AdoramaTV.com, although it's not as direct for the live stream. So I would go to the YouTube via that way if you want to do that. So, but yeah, so every Thursday we're here. Oh, good, I was waiting for you. Every Thursday we're here and uh, doing our live demos. So you'll see me, then you won't ask because you'll know, right? Next Thursday, when you come, you're going to come next Thursday? I might ask you again. It depends. She might ask me again. She's messing with me now. I like that. So, um, oh, okay. So today we're doing simple lighting for beauty photography. And uh, I'm Daniel Norton. This is Dave. Got Suki busting out the makeup over here. Seth on the Mix Master. And our amazing model. What's your name? Janine. Janine. Yes. Oh, Janine. Okay, so we got a whole crew going on here. And uh, we like to keep this a little bit casual. So if you guys have questions. Oh, I thought you were bailing after you saw the model. That would have been mean. <laughs> so, so, it was like, here's the model. He's like, well, I'm out of here. So, uh, so we're going to walk through the process of lighting uh, for beauty photography. If you have questions, uh, please ask, and I will answer. Um, if you're online and you have questions, uh, also feel free to ask, and I will try to answer. Um, we are, uh, I always stop doing this about 10 minutes into it, so just ask me. I'm going to try to go through all the equipment I'm using so you guys will have a, a reference. Um, if, uh, if I don't say something or you're un unsure about what I'm saying about what the equipment is, then please ask, and I will tell you. Um, we are shooting tethered. Whenever I'm shooting any kind of commercial photography um, or doing a demo at Arama, I like to be tethered. Tethering meaning that I have my uh, a cable, a USB cable in this case, going from my, my camera, which is an Icon D5, to my computer into a software called Capture One. This is allowing us to see the images as we shoot them. Sure, you can see them on the back of your screen, but you're seeing the actual raw image here, which means we can zoom into it, we can make adjustments, we can crop. We really see the actual image. So it's, it makes life a lot easier, especially if you're doing things that are detail oriented like product photography and beauty photography, food, really anything if you can. Um, so I just have a MacBook here. It's on the little, people always ask me about this table. This is a Tether Tools table. You just put it on a stand and you can put your computer there. Um, and we are using an Nikon, as I said. We're using a Nikon uh, D5. We're using a 105 lens. You know, people always ask me about what lens to use. That's a very common uh, question. And generally, when you're making portraits uh, or beauty shots, you want a little bit of a longer lens, um, something like 85, 105, 135. You can go as far as 200, depending on what you're doing. Uh, just keep in mind uh, your compression, right? When you're using a longer lens, you're further away, which means you compress the image, which is going to flatten things. It makes the, the, the whole face look flatter which generally can be flattering, but it can also look bad depending on the person. So you're going to have to kind of feel that out. Um, but I find 105 is a nice place to go. And I didn't bring any other lenses up here, so that's what we're going to use. Sometimes that's the reason why I use a lens. But no, this is a nice lens uh, from Nikon. So we'll start with our, with our model here. You can uh, stand here. OK. It's going to be very confusing because I'm going to talk, but Dave is going to take the pictures. Yeah, I know. It's super confusing. I don't know why we do it that way. Somehow we picked up that system. So the number one thing that we're going to do here, though, we want to take control of our situation. We're lighting stuff, right? So you'll see, obviously, you can see me, that we are all lit up here, right? We've got, uh, we've got the fluorescent lights and, and incandescent lights lighting this as a stage shot so somebody can do a lecture, which is what I'm doing. But we don't want that for our beauty shot. That's not going to look good on her. So what we want to do is eliminate the light in the space. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use flash. Flash is tremendously powerful, um, and it's going to allow us to basically... Uh, get an exposure uh, on our model using the flash that's darker than the or brighter than the space I should say so the first thing we do to, to do that is we want to set up a frame where when we make a photo the frame is black meaning none of the light in the space affects our flame frame we do that by setting our ISO as low as it can go within its normal range in this camera that's 100 ISO um, we then set our shutter speed at our maximum synchronization speed on this camera that is 250th of a second on some cameras it's 200, on some it's 160. You'll have to look on your individual camera to know exactly what that speed is, okay? There is such a thing called high-speed sync. Don't worry about that today. That's a very specialized thing that we deal with when we do more advanced flash. For, for, this, for this demo, we're gonna uh, go with the basics, the basis that we can only sync up to our flash, uh, our camera flash sync speed, which again is 250 in this case. If you were to do a faster shutter speed, what would happen is, you may have had this happen to you, 
uh, you'll get like a black line across your frame. That's because the flash is not uh, firing at the proper synchronization. So we're at 250, we're at 100, that's where we start. No matter where I am, if I'm standing outside, we're in Adorama, we're at my studio, we're at your apartment, that, those numbers are always the same because they can, they can be locked in. Before you even get there, you can put your camera set there. The third factor in your exposure triangle is your aperture. And we determine what aperture to use based on our environment. If we're somewhere where it's tremendously bright, we're gonna have to have a more closed down aperture. If we're somewhere that's very dark, we can get away with a uh, more opened up. So in this space, we usually shoot around F8. Uh, I know that because I'm here every Thursday, but if you weren't here every Thursday, you could just set your, your camera somewhere in the middle and take a photo and look at it, right? What you're, aiming, what you're aiming for is a black frame. So let's shoot that. Right, so, is that it right there? Yeah. Okay, so here we go, we got a black frame. You guys can see it, right? Um, I'll go over to my exposure slider um, as if, if you were in Photoshop like after the fact and you shot this picture and you were like, oh man, it's underexposed. Yeah, it's definitely underexposed. Um, you could grab your exposure slider and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna pull it over. I wanna make sure I'm at least a couple stops underexposed. So I start to see her at about 2.79. So that means I'm like having to pull up my images at almost three stops in order to even start to see her. So we're pretty good. If I dragged it all the way across and uh, to four stops or whatever and she st it was still completely black, then I could probably open up my lens if I wanted to. Um, I do like to shoot around F8, F11 for beauty anyways. We want to keep the whole face in focus. Uh, so I'm fine here. If for some reason you wanted a more shallow depth of field, you could do that. Um, if the lighting situation provided it. We could obviously turn off the lights, we could close the windows, there's lots of things that you could do. But we like this, so that's where we're gonna go. Now, next step is to add some light to her. Beauty photography is about shape and contrast, right? So a lot of times we wanna use a harder type of light. So when you're talking about light, you hear people say hard and soft a lot, right? It's common phrases. So a hard light source is, is small, right? Small relative to your subject, makes your light hard. And the qualities of hard light are such that it, you have abrupt ends to the shadows, right? And it immediately goes into darkness. You don't have this kind of feather into it. A soft light has that. So by using a harder light source, we're gonna be able to get those like cheekbones to really look like uh, set, you know, crisp in, our, in the, the chin, because we'll have an immediate drop to shadow, right? If we later really flatten even, we won't have that. And we're gonna actually do that for, uh, after if we have time, which we should have time. I think we'll start without the grid. Um, it's always a good idea when you're lighting something, unless you've done exactly that lighting before, to build it up a little bit at a time. I've been doing this for a long time. I still do it that way. I don't just like set everything up and start taking pictures. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're using a beauty dish. Beauty dish is 22 inches, right? Um, this one happens to be silver. It's got a little piece of brown tape on it. Uh, so beauty dish is going to give us relatively hard light. Um, Compared to, compared to her because it's not going to be super close to her. There's going to be a crisp, uh, hard light. And we're going to light her face up with it to start. And then we'll take a look at it. And then we'll adjust from there. Now, I'm not going to use a handheld light meter today because I have, I'm using a Profoto system which has built into it what's called TTL. TTL is an exposure system that, that allows the light to communicate with the remote on top of the camera and give us an exposure without having to use a handheld meter. Um, you could just as easily use a handheld meter. It's not really any different. Do we have a meter? Okay, no, okay, it's fine. There used to be one there, but I think we put it upstairs. Yeah, so we don't have a meter. Um, so I can't show you how to do that. Come back again and you'll learn that. See, this is what I do. It's you always got to give a little bit. <laughs> got to keep a little bit. Okay, so we've got our beauty dish. Now, we do want to we, we, we keep control of our light. Generally, you want to put the light as close as possible to somebody, so we want to keep our light relatively in. Also, keep in mind, though, that with such a punchy light this close to her, it, she, you have to watch the direction of her head, right? Our light is at an angle, right? If she, if she was standing right here, step forward, good, right? You see how the light's here? It's hitting her, the, for, the top of her head, before it's hitting her chin, which means that the top of her head is going to be brighter, right? So if we want to use a light in this kind of situation, what we're going to want to do is have her work her chin up so that she's at the same angle as the light, thus giving us even light across her face. Okay? If, if you need her face to be flat to you, then you're going to have to use a light that's a little bit more flat or back it up. Because fall off has a lot to do with distance, right? The closer a light is to you, the more you're going to see that difference of that like one inch closer. 
So, you know, you got a few different options. If you really wanted to use a beauty dish and you needed her face to be flat, I'd probably just back it up a little bit. Yeah. So let's, we'll take a shot and we'll see what happens, right? This is where the magic happens. Perfect. Okay. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next week at noon. No. All right. So, all right. So here we've got hard, crisp light, right? It's shaping her face. We can see the cheekbones. She actually, for people at home who can't actually see her in real life, her face is completely round. She has no chin. No, actually, that's not true. No. Casting is very important for beauty photography. I should probably say that. So you, you want to take somebody who has a nice face for it. So it's got nice even light over her face. We've got nice crisp shadows. I'm probably going to maybe not have her work so much to the side. Let's do more of a straight shot with your face so that we can see the light. Um, and we're trying to shape that face, right? There we go. Now, you might notice, obviously you can shoot in any direction you want. I'm just trying to demonstrate the light. You might notice that the background is darker in the picture than it is in life, right? That is because of the distance between the model to the light and the light to the background. She's closer to the light, she's brighter. So if we expose for her, the background gets darker, right? This is a way that you can help control your background. Now we've got a darker background. Um, we can actually, just to show you, because people always want to see this, could you grab one of those white cards that Seth so nicely provided for us? Yeah. These are uh, Seth sells these for $85 each after the show if you want to see uh, their unique white cards. Anyways, this is a reflector. You can also use one of those pop-up reflectors. And we're going to pop some of the light under her chin. You can even make her hold it if you want, if you're lazy, if you're just like, let her hold it, whatever. Now, when you're putting a reflector and you want to make sure, and I can see it, right? I, my, I want my light to hit the reflector. So that's important. So we want to keep it up so that the light hits it. Um, if the light doesn't hit your reflector, it doesn't really do much, right? Just something for her to hold. She could probably put drinks on it. Yeah, I mean, it's in the shot a little bit, but we can see how it filled the shadow, right? So we can keep the hard, crisp light to shape the face, but we can fill in the shadow a little bit if that shadow was too intense for you. That's, that's one, uh, one way to handle that, which we might do. Actually, it's a little, probably a little too close because it's in the shot, but there you go, better, right? Now we've got uh, kind of, this is a little bit more kind of glamorous. Uh, you know, you might, if you were shooting a portrait of somebody, they probably don't want such harsh shadows. So um, this is a little bit nicer if you're shooting like a magazine cover or something like that, like, you know, a little cleaner. If you, if you were going for more of like a kind of a heavy fashion look, you probably would keep the shadows because fashion people love shadows. Cool. Questions so far? Answers? No. All right. I'm always looking for those, but it never seems to come. Okay. So we can see right now that we have the classic, excuse me, the classic photographer thing, which is we only have one light because people love to just use one light. We got the one light and she's kind of blending into the background because she has dark hair, right? Where the background is getting dark. We've got a few options here. We could light the background, right? Which is a pretty common way to work. Um, or we could add a separation light with her. I think we're going to do that because that's what I like to do because I'm old fashioned. Um, so also what these are also good for is you can write stuff on them like slogans, you know, come see Dana's class, get makeup by Suki. Don't put me up. <laughs> uh, yes. About the card? Okay. Do sell them Okay, so the question is, do all, you can do that with all cameras? Is that what you're asking me? You can do it with any camera that has a hot shoe or a sync cord, yeah. If you're using flash, that's how it operates. The flash only fires when you take a picture. So it's synchronized with your program is what you're saying? It's synchronized with the camera. Okay, yeah, 100%. But flash is the program you're using? The program is just bringing the images into the computer. Okay, is that what your cool. question is? That's a separate thing. All right, I got it. A lot of moving pieces here. We got, we got we're juggling. That's why I have Dave. He takes care of all that. Okay, so we're, we're gonna use a strip bank in the back, I think. We've got a Profoto 1x3. Uh, it, it is, uh, has a, I'm gonna try to spin it. It has a grid on it, so, right? Egg, egg crate grid. That's gonna help narrow uh, the angle, it narrow the beam angle. Now, like, like, like a little limp, whoa. Was that me? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, it's gonna keep the, keep the angle narrow. The reason why I'm using a strip is because I wanna have a narrow beam of light. I'm using the grid to even make it more narrow. We want control. We don't want that light spilling all over the place. It's all about precision with this. So we're gonna bring this in behind her and we're gonna do a little like separation uh, hair light to give us some three dimensionality on her. So you're saying the grid is just containing the light? That's right. A grid does not focus the light, which you didn't say. I'm not gonna make some of the A grid 
narrows the beam. That's important because when you focus a light, focusing a light increases the intensity in the center of it. It, it, it creates, yes. That's a good question. So do I set the white balance on camera or post? What you should do, see I'm giving you the rule here. I never say should. What you should do is shoot a, a white balance card if this was a commercial project. Um, and because I'm shooting tethered, uh, I, it's basically doing it for me. I almost always just leave my camera on daylight because that's just how I shoot. Um, but if I was do this was a project, I would shoot a white balance card and set my white balance before I start. So essentially doing it in camera because every shot that comes up, you want to look correct. We set it on flash. Profoto is really good with color, so usually that's all you got to do. But if you want, if I was actually doing a makeup campaign, I definitely would do a custom white balance because every little thing you do, this beauty dish is 87 years old. I know it's weird. You don't even know that. And because of that, the color is a little bit off, right? It's never perfect. The color of your modifiers, like you could have the most perfect light in the world. You buy your Profoto light, you buy your bronze color, you buy whatever other light that's good, pencil, right? And you've got nice, crisp, clean color. You're like, yes, perfect. And then you put some modifier in front of it that has a yellow tinge to it, and now all of a sudden your pictures are yellow. So it's important to do a custom white balance if you're doing a commercial project. Um, okay. Okay, so Dave's setting some stuff up. Now, the way we're set up here uh, on this TTL system is we have two uh, groups, they call it with this? Two groups, A and B. So this is our A light, this is our B light. That's gonna allow us to basically have the exposures be different and control them remotely. So let's just do the B light, because I feel like it. Now I will say, when using TTL, one of the disadvantages of it is that oftentimes when things are backlit, in other words, a lot of light coming from the back, it, it throws off the exposure. So we're gonna try to establish our exposure um, using the TTL. That's actually not terrible. It actually does a decent job when I say it's gonna be a problem. Um, okay, that's not bad, it's a little hot on top of our head. So we're gonna uh, reduce the power of that light. But before we do that, let's bring in the other light. Okay. So they've switched into manual now so we can kind of tweak. Um, one of the questions I get a lot about TTL is like, you know, do you use it all the time? I almost always use it when I have the ability to use it, at least to set my base exposures. Then I'll adjust manually if need be, especially in a heavily backlit situation. Cool, all right. It's still a little hot on top of our head. It is. Uh, also, I'm creating a shadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got a couple of issues going on here. We have a shadow, because this, but with this is throwing a shadow. Before we fix that though, because I like the light on our face, I think we're gonna add the grid. Because I want no light on the background, I actually want a darker background, so what I'm gonna do, right? This is the grid, or the honeycomb grid, which is, honeycomb is also a cereal. It's delicious. Um, and although if they were this big, you wouldn't fit them in your bowl, but anyways. This is the honeycomb grid. It's going to narrow our beam angle from, I think, 120 to 25. And that's going to keep the light off the background. Because now, or it should anyways, because now our light's not spreading out so much, it's staying more directed, right? So we're going to try that first, see if we can get the light off the background. That may alleviate the problem with the shadow that we're creating. That's my profile. Yeah, okay, background's getting dark. That's good. Maybe she should work her chin up a little bit. Yep. Yeah, this, the grid eats up light, and remember that we're in uh, TTL, uh, not in TTL anymore. So it's, it's going to, uh, yeah. We did, that's why we have to do it manually now. If you had been in TTL and you put a grid on it, it would just automatically compensate. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's, it, now this is hot. But I actually think I, I mean, can we just back it up maybe instead of, yeah. I think I'm going to physically move it further away. To get a little bit more spread. So I'm just going to slide it back. Hopefully that'll be enough. Is it in the shot now or no? Cool. So we'll try it. It's important to always stand by a stand because you look cool. Yes, you have a question? I'm not going to light the background. Do you want me to? Yeah, I'd like to see the difference. And okay. Then... Okay. Yeah, we can light up the background in the next shot. Oh, all right, got through. You never know if you're going to get through. There we go. Yeah, and maybe still drop it a little bit in power. We could light the background. 
Um, we'll do a different shot with that. Because I think hard, contrasty light on her face with a lit up background is not gonna look right. It's gonna look weird. So and we're gonna switch to, and I'm, well, I don't wanna give away too much, but we're gonna switch our modifier in the front away from the beauty dish, and when we do that, we'll light the background. Just for you. See that? I aim to please. Any other questions? Could you explain, I know at the beginning you explained it, what's the purpose of the backlights? What's the, what function it serves? Oh, can you see it? You're asking about the backlight. Can't you see what the backlight does? You don't see the background. Right? You have a light at the back. The, the fire is the turn, can you turn the background, the backlight off? Back off. Yeah, just turn it off. Okay. Can you see what it does? It does the decrease of the contrast. Okay. Right you could explain it any way you like, but I can clearly, you can clearly see what it does, right? It's giving her three dimensionality. It's lighting her hair up. It's separating her from the background. It's doing a whole lot of stuff. On the right, her hair is black. It's blending into the background. We have no definition in her hair. She has no shape. She's basically a face in darkness. In the second shot, she's three dimensional. She's lit up. You don't see that? I, I see. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm just checking because maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I, I, I might be missing something, but I think it's fairly in obvious. The, in the beauty shots, the yep. background I think in this particular case, it's better, is my opinion, yes. The shoulder there is really white. Her shoulder is really white. It's okay? It's okay? No, it's not okay. okay. Do you think it's okay? No, I'm asking you. Well, you tell me. Well, um, sometimes people like, you know, that yeah. look. But you could have a blown out shoulder if you want. What we could do is we can, we, there's a lot of things we can do if we don't like that. Okay. And of course, we don't have the, the net, right? We don't have a net. We can... Well, yeah, it's definitely pointing more. Well, I know why it is, but I'm just saying, do, do you want to raise it? We can tilt it up. Yeah, maybe we could we could tilt the angle. There's a lot of ways we can handle this. Yeah, and it, let's do that first. We're gonna lower the power a little bit first. We're gonna work on that because sure, that's an issue. Now, is it really an issue to give you a, a more technical answer? If we come in on this image and we go in close and we have detail in the white, which we do not, then it's probably acceptable. In this case, we're blowing out that highlight, which means we can never bring it back. Which means that right now you might think that's awesome, but if the client later goes, oh man, her shoulder's bright, you're kind of stuck, right? So I would say it's not acceptable for that reason. Um, it can be bright, but I would always want some detail in it. You've got, and it's not bad, but you're losing a little detail. I think with uh, the slight lowering of power and the slight tilt of the light, we'll be able to fix that. But that's a good question, good observation. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do it, feathering it, moving it. I'm trying not to be too complicated because it's supposed to be simple beauty length, so we're not going to use a lot of equipment. I'm trying to keep it simple. We only have two lights. Next, we'll do complicated beauty photography, and I'll get a lot of lights. I like to use a lot of lights. Well, you get paid more the more lights you use, so it's important to add lights whenever possible, right? You know what I'm talking about. You know that's the truth. I usually just have a couple extra lights on the side. I'm, oh, those are important. Yeah. Of course. All right, let's see. Essentially on a stand or something. Good. This is not terrible. Other questions? Her eyes are dark. What? Her eyes seem dark. Is there any way to... They do? Do your eyes seem dark? Uh, I don't see that, so I'm not sure what you mean by that. In this shot, they are dark because her chin is down. Yes, I agree. But again, what I said at the beginning was, since the light is at this angle, you're going to want to keep her, her chin at the angle of the light. That's important. Uh, yeah. This light, remember, you want to match the angle. If you don't match the angle to your light, then you're going to get dark eyes. Now, you could also bring a, uh, a reflector in, but it becomes a lot more complicated with the grid to use a reflector because now our, ang our, our light is not spilling as much. I don't know what happened there. I see myself twice, which is really kind of freaky. Yeah. If you could make one so they're facing, so it looks like I'm looking at myself, that'd be awesome. Then you have to shake your own hand. Yeah, I would do that. I would shake my own hand. So now, I think this will work. 
Is that good? I'm just going to see if that fills in. I don't. Yeah, I guess I am. She won't let go. She's very strong. <laughs> She's like fighting me over here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think that the, they're about as bright as they're going to get. And it does not bother me. I think they look great. Yeah. Uh, if you felt like they were too bright, uh, too dark, uh, you could probably add another light, I guess. I don't know that I would do that because I feel like you'll crush shadows. Yep. Cool. Anyways, how's our shoulder now, though? Oh, I'm on that shot. Cool. All right. So now we've got pretty much detail on the shoulder. We're a tiny, tiny bit here, but we're basically there. So now it's not overexposed, right? That better for you? See, I'm, I'm here only a little better. You still think it's too bright? I got a question. Yes. Okay, so the question is, like, do you like differently, I guess, depending on the makeup? So the I mean, on shop, some level. So the question in the beauty shop, what's the best effect? I'm sure you know that. Would it be better to have the natural... See, the problem that I have with the question that you're asking, which is, what is the best? There is no best. Beauty is a, a, a category of fashion photography. Fashion photography changes by the month, by the day, by the second. Right? right now, her skin being even and clean might be perfect. This might be good for a certain magazine. In another situation, having glowy skin with blown out highlights might be perfect. In another situation, very, very dark might be good. It really depends on what you're going for and your ultimate goal. There is no best, there is no better. I can't tell you the exact way to set it up to always do every single beauty shot. If you do that, you will not be creative. That's where you come in. I'm showing you the basics uh, of setting it up. So. Does the skin reflect differently? Not really. I mean, yes, if the, t if the makeup has a lot of titanium dioxide in it, it will be more specular. It'll reflect more. So then you use a more diffuse light source, right? If it's more matte makeup, you don't have to do that. But yeah, it's, it's not uh, good makeup shouldn't make that much of a difference, really, as far as how you light it. Yes. No, so that's a good question. So there's stray hairs. If this was an actual campaign and we were shooting it, they'd be a separate hair and makeup, a separate hair person, and I'd constantly be going, hair, hair, and they'd be going. I could do it if you want. Well, no, but that's how you would do it. Yeah, would you like to fix that? She, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, if it, obviously if it's a job, you never want to retouch stuff um, if you can avoid it, but at the same time, you don't want to slow down your shoot because of silly things, you know? If you know that this one tiny piece and the model's doing exactly the right thing, I'd shoot it. I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm not gonna take the picture because the hair is flying, but then I would have them fix it. So yeah, I, I try to, that's, that's work to me and time is money. You know, people love to, to work on the computer. I don't personally, but people, some people love to do it and that's awesome. But when you're actually working commercially, like you might not even be able to do that or you're, or you're investing, you're being paid to shoot this job and now you spend an extra two days fixing every single one because it's not like you get to pick the final one. The client wants them all to look good, right? So you're better off having the makeup artist fix it on the spot if you can, yes. Do you want to fix it? Are you going to fix it? Yes, there. No, my lens is great. I don't have, I just stand here. Yes. Uh-oh. You know what? For you, I'm going to do that. So, I'm using a beauty dish. Well, yeah, of course I am because we're doing <laughs> beauty, right? No, and actually one of my favorite things to shoot beauty is a shoot through umbrella. And it's funny that you would ask that. I actually had her come to ask that question on purpose exactly at 1230. So yeah, let's switch to the shoot through umbrella. I love umbrellas. Um, it's one of my favorite things to use. Um, and we happen to have one right here because I was thinking about you. And the thing is, the umbrella is going to create a much larger light source. It's going to be softer, right? It's also going to scatter the light everywhere, which means that if in a small space like this, if I want a black background, it's going to be tremendously difficult to get that light off the background. So you have to know that going into it. If I want, my client says to me, hey, uh, yeah, can you do that in this space? I would have a hard time doing it with a, Dave can do it. We're not going to make him do it, but Dave can get the background black with the umbrella, but most of us cannot. Uh, so, uh, yeah. One hundred percent. 
Yes, it should. The background will not be able to go completely black. It will be probably, depending on how close we put it to the model, it'll still be slightly darker than than it is to your eye, but it won't be it won't be black. But what we're going to do there is we're going to then combine what you wanted, and we're going to light the background. Cool. You having a good time? Yes. Okay. Good. Mm hmm exactly. This is a 41-inch deep translucent. Not that the translucentness of it is deep, but that the umbrella itself is deep. If you can be a deep. I'm totally fine. Yes? So, yeah, the question is a smaller umbrella. Uh, yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, but remember that the light doesn't like hit the umbrella and just like light the umbrella, it goes out, right? So since your umbrella doesn't have any means of controlling it, even a small umbrella is still gonna throw the light everywhere. It might be a little bit tighter. Um, I like this size. Uh, it's, if you're gonna only have one umbrella, it's kind of a medium size, but sure, small ones are nice too. Okay. So we'll, now, again, we're going to only use the one light uh, to start with. We'll see what the, what the umbrella does. Um, we're going to switch to TTL. We've got the umbrella here. Again, it's a, kind of a large kind of wash of light in front of her, and we'll just kind of see what we get. Yeah, I might. Yeah, you're going to pull it back. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Actually, need, probably yeah. Okay, yeah. So again, the general rule of thumb is to try to get the lights as close as possible, but you'll have to also think of angles, right? If we get the light too close to her, then it's kind of going over her head. So we do want light in front of her, so we gotta think about that. And this is one of those cases where using the reflector is gonna be really useful, because light's gonna come here. We're gonna have lots of light to bounce back up. So we'll definitely use a reflector here as well. Which, which I lost, I had a, a minute ago. Okay. So now it's got a wash of light, right? It's, it's a softer light source. But again, because of the angle of it, you've got shade in the eye. So she's gonna either have to work her chin up or I think we're gonna use a reflector in this case. Let's, uh, where's that white card? Do we put it back? Oh, you guys are so efficient. I think I also wanna pull it back a bit too. Yeah, I think so too. I got it. I, I can hold it. The rescue the, from is good for small spaces. Yeah, I mean, an umbrella is good for small space as long as you don't uh, care about keeping the light off the background. It's all about lighting. I look at he got mid sentence just had this much. I gotta have something to do. Cool. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit. Probably even get it closer. You're pretty close to her. Let me come in closer. There we go. Cool. Now it's cleaned it up a little bit, you know, and she can she can keep her chin down lower if she wants. I think we could even drop the umbrella. Can we go lower with the umbrella? Let's back it up a tiny bit more. The great thing about the umbrella is it's so yeah, big. Back it up. I'm, I'm right on the edge. Yeah. The great thing about the umbrella is because it's so big we can actually back it up. The further back we make it, the lower it is in perspective to our model, right? Which means that we can actually uh, get it more into her eyes without having to bring the chin up because that's what we're working on now. We're working more and more of a flat shot like this. No, we're only going to light the background. Nice. There we go. Now we're there. Okay, so now we can see it's nice and even across her face. It is a soft light. We can tell by the shadows here how the edges bleed out, right? Nice and even. This is a better if you want to uh, have a lower contrast on the face. Also, if somebody is older, let's say, and they you know, have more wrinkles, they want like a beauty style shot. But we can see the background is, is dark, but it's still, you know, it's gray. It's not black. Um, we're going to light the background for this one. We're not going to use a hair light because we only have two lights, right? We set ourselves up with only two lights for this one because I wanted to keep it simple. So let's just throw maybe like a circle. What do you think? On the background? Yeah. Actually, let's use the magnum and put it right here and just blast the background. Okay. Just because I feel like it. 
So I'm going to lose this guy for a second. We're going to switch out of the softbox. Like, we don't want to use this softbox to light the background, because if we do, right, this softbox is exactly the opposite of what we want. The softbox is designed to keep the light contained. And we don't want to contain the light now. We want to get a spread on the background. We're not going to be able to make the background like perfectly even, but we will be able to get it fairly even, especially considering it's only got to be behind our head. Um, and in order to do that, we're actually going to take our light source, which is the, the Profoto, and we're going to put a reflector on it, a magnum reflector, um, and we're just going to like shoot it right behind our head, basically just blasting the background with light. No, they're two different lights. I'm using a Profoto B1 right here, which is a 500 watt uh, battery powered light. This is a Profoto D2, which is a 1000 watt uh, plug-in. So, so the light in the back should be lighter, should be less wattage. Well, it's less powerful for sure, but it's not set at lower power. All right. It's flash, flash can be adjusted power wise. Right. There's more power hit in the background than there is hit in the front. For sure. Because again, we want our background to be bright. In order to make our background bright, we're going to have to hit it with more light. Yes? Oh, you can. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the uh, the question is, do I have to have Profoto lights, or is there something less expensive, or whatever, so that affects what you're asking me. Yeah, of course, 100%. What you pay for in lighting is consistency, in power, and in color, and reliability. So you could take any light that has a beauty dish capability or an umbrella and do the same lighting uh, patterns, you could even, to a certain extent, use even small flashes. However, you may not have the consistent results throughout your entire uh, process. So if you're doing it commercially, you may want to rent or something. You know, Revlon hires you. You probably don't want to show up with, you know, some inexpensive lights. You're doing tests to build your portfolio. You're, you know, yeah, of course, 100%. Better to have lights than not at all. And there's plenty of inexpensive brands, including uh, Adorama's own house brand, which I believe has beauty dishes that you could buy, and it's very inexpensive. And if you have more money, you could buy brown color. How are the Dino lights? Dino light is very good. Made in New Jersey. Little tiny baby guys. And they're Dino lights. No, it's like a, it's like a superhero from the twenties. No. Yeah, maybe. Was that a transformer? Well, that's not from the 20s, though. That's not the 20s. I know that was your heyday, <laughs> but... <laughs> My grandmother's. All right. Nice. Okay. So now the background's got a, a light on it. Um, it's average gray color because we're probably using TTL, I'm assuming. Uh, I'm manual. You're in manual. Random. I wasn't going for one. Okay, you just picked a, re a random mount. Now we're going to up the power. We want to overexpose our background because right now it looks the way it looks to your eye, right? It's averagely relit. If we overexpose it, it will get brighter, right? And then we'll get that three dimensionality going because right now it's a little flat. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to bring back this. Are you throwing stuff at me? Do you want to hold it now? Because I knew you were anxious to hold it before. Yes, good. Thank you. She likes to hold it. There we go. Now we've got a, a brighter background, right? So, oh, you know, you got to be like. Yeah, I think you're a little sm smidge bright. Let's put this on a stand. Can I have that little baby C stand so I could put this? Uh, I'm gonna put the reflector on the stand um, because I'm gonna have her throw her hair around now because she, with a white background, you got to smile and throw your hair. Like it, it can't not be done. It's unfortunate because I don't speak Portuguese. Portuguese, right? Yeah, no. Greek, I speak. No, not at all. Is it all Greek to you? Yes, it's all Greek to me, exactly. Thank you. See, this is why I like you.
<laughs> yeah, the old man jokes always hit. Yes, yeah. lame jokes are my specialty. <laughs> okay. Way more organized than I am. <laughs> cool. I like the holder. Yeah, actually, I'm stealing this from Seth. I saw him do this the other day, and I was like, oh. Oh, you steal my tricks. I am. I'm stealing your tricks. That's what you do. That's what we do as photographers. We learn. Can you give me credit? I just gave you credit. Did I not just say I took it from Seth? You heard me say it, right? <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so we're going to bring this up. So you're going to go like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, she knows how to do it. That's why his hair long. Too. Yeah, that's exactly why I grew my hair long, literally. So I can go like this. <laughs> so they know what I'm doing. Don't screw it up. She's got it. I don't know if we have enough space for that. No, you got it. No, not a full flip. Just like, just like a. No, no, she's good. Not a full flip, just a. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Something happened. There we go. Okay, almost. Almost, almost. I can't stand there because I'm in that weird camera angle. I don't speak Portuguese, unfortunately. I speak a tiny bit of Spanish terribly. So, so where would you suggest the uh, camera be? A little bit above the eye level, above eyes? Or That's a good question. So where to put the camera? Um, I generally go kind of eye level-ish to start. Sometimes a tiny bit less or a tiny bit more, kind of up or down. Um, I try not to go too extreme unless I'm going for something specific because you definitely will set yourself up as either dominant um, or submissive to the, to relative to the subject based on where you are. So in this case, because we were starting with the beauty, I think Dave might be a smidge higher because we knew she was going to have her chin up, which if she puts her chin up and we're low, you're going to see up her nose. See, there we go. That's it. Boom. Right? So, right, that's a, that's a good question though. So I generally start off even with the eyes and I'll adjust based on my lighting and also how I want to feel about the subject. I don't necessarily want to uh, be shooting down at somebody all the time. Uh, it depends on the angle you're going for. A lot of times we want people to feel more powerful in the shot. For that, we want to shoot up at them slightly. But again, if her chin's up, then you're gonna have her shoot up her nose. So you gotta be wary of that. Some people like that. Um, it's a pretty common this is good. Uh, let's do 100 more, and then we'll go into Photoshop and put all the hair together so we get it perfect. <laughs> the hair retouchers. Okay, questions, thoughts? The setting on the camera is the same. When you do That's correct. I never change my camera, ever. Like, I literally don't ever change it, no matter where I go. No, once you start, you don't change the camera. You change your light, you change your model. Yeah. The reason why is because my, ca why my camera is set to eliminate the light in the space. If I was running around in the park shooting stuff, I would have changed my camera based on all the different lighting that's around me. But here, I need to leave my camera where it is in order to eliminate the, the light. If I was suddenly like, oh no, I need more light, it's too dark, I'm gonna go to 2.8, all of a sudden I'd start picking up the light in the space. So I don't want that. I wanna keep my camera set the way it is. What about the white balance? White balance is set on flash. I mean, the, um, the card, you set the... Yep, the white balance card. I don't have one with me, but essentially they make the one that I like is, uh, Fotec makes it, it's called a, uh, Fotec? Digital Target? Digital it's called a Digital Target. I think it's Photek. I'm probably, probably saying the wrong brand. It's called Digital Target. It has a line of uh, white, a line of gray, and a line of black. So when you put it in, and, one. Right. So what you do is you get your light set up exactly so you know it's correct, and then you put it in the place of the face of the model, and you make a photo of it. Then you can use any of those to make your white balance, but also because it's black, white, and gray, you can get a histogram off of it. So it helps you with your uh, exposure as well. That's why I like that one. X-Rite also makes it as a card that does the same thing. I just like the, the photo, photo vision, that's who makes it, because it's uh, waterproof and you can put it in your bag. Yeah. Well, a few people make them, but that's the one that I like. So if you care what I like, that's what I like. Other questions? Last Light also makes them, but it's just gray, though. Yes? Well, that's a good question. So what if we're shooting a profile? I don't know. Can you make a profile? Look at me. Hmm? 
I mean, it's even, right? If we want a dramatic profile, then not necessarily, but this, this light, this is the beauty of the umbrella, is it's very even, so you can move around. Um, so yeah, if you were shooting like a fun, like little uh, series of beauty stuff, you could have her sideways to showcase like a powder puff or whatever. It's totally even. Um, we could make it more dramatic. Do we have time for that? If we took the light and we brought it around to the side, we could make it more dramatic and directional. Is, do you want to do that? Yeah, okay. Are you happy with the umbrella? Oh, she's not paying attention anymore. All right, she's already, she lost her rights. To, what's that? No, we're gonna move the light. Actually, let's just do this. Let's use a magnum. Aha. Yeah, let's turn off the umbrella. Let's just use the magnum. So. Very subtle fill with it. Yeah, and we'll do a fill with it exactly. So, this is the magnum reflector. This is actually my favorite reflector the Profoto makes. So, they should name it after me. I keep trying to get somebody to name something after me, but they, they, they won't do it. All right. I could do that. Why don't you have a baby name it after me? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. She's the one who said it. See, because she's not on the mic. I seem like I'm... All right. Yeah. All right. I mean, I, so you're going fa to face the light? There you go. There we go. And... There you go. I don't know. Chin. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to use the magnum reflector, um, and we're going to just blast her with hard light from the side. And it should create something relatively dramatic. Let's see what happens. I'm sure I'm going to need this, but I'm, that's why I haven't put it away yet. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to hit the background. That's why I have the flag out still. No, not really. Okay, so it's a little hot, right? Our exposure is a little up, so we can adjust for that. And also, I guess we'll probably, uh, I don't think this will do anything, but let's just see. It, this is probably not going to do much. And why is it not going to do much? Because there's no light really reaching it. Plus, it's going further than the light that's in your face. Yeah, it's not doing much. OK. So now we've got a bit more of a dramatic shot, right? Now we've got a side shot. This is a, the magnet reflector is very small, relatively speaking. It's very punchy, right? It's, it's hitting her and creating a lot of contrast, which, you know, if you like that kind of thing. Now, if you want to fill in, we could then use the umbrella, right? We could take our umbrella and dial it in very, very low power just to give some light from the front. It may not go low enough, but we'll see. But again, it's going to probably hit the background, which is going to eat up some of uh, our black. Like, it's probably going to be like a dark gray. I'm guessing, but we'll see. No, not really. Not at two. You need a little more power, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Dave's going to go into capture one. Okay, so we're trying to, fill it, we're trying to figure out our fill in the shadows. So he's going to bring the exposure up, and we're only watching our shadows now. And when he gets it to, to where he wants it, he'll know how much power he needs to add to the front light. Right? You follow that? So basically, he's bringing the exposure up. He's only looking at the shadows. Obviously, the highlights are going to blow out. That doesn't matter, because the highlights are controlled by the light. So he's going to bring it up until the shadows look the way he wants. He's going to look at the amount that he had to bring it up. He's going to increase the power of this light by that much. That's like a quick way to kind of get yourself close, and then we can tweak it from there. There you go. So now it's filled in. Right? We've got the hard light. We have some fill. We're still having that problem with losing the hair, but I think in this kind of dramatic shot, it's probably OK. Uh, again, you do need a light source if you want to uh, get separation from the hair. Yeah, silver reflector might add something. I mean, yeah. The problem is really physics, right? If, we, if our light's coming from here, and it's traveling to her, and this is properly exposed, right? Then it has to travel additionally another foot or so, bounce off something, even if that thing was a mirror, and then come back and then light her hair, which is much darker than her face, right? It's just not going to be enough light. It's just not possible. Now, you could do the other way, which is you could turn this way. Well, I would I'd back this up. You could do, oh, shoot over her head. Well, no, just, uh, just back it up for the inverse square ball, so. Mm -hmm. But even still, it still has to go further. I think, yeah. let's do the other thing. Sure. The other thing that we do. Yeah. So come face this way for me. 
There we go. Like here? There is that. Mm -hmm. Now, if we do this, now this light becomes her hair light, right? We bounce the light off of this. This now becomes her, her, the light that's lighting her face. It will be darker because, I'll get out of the shot. This is also good if she's shy, so they can cover her face here and you can't see. Are we killing the umbrella too just to see the effect? Okay, umbrella's down. Right, so now we're basically using bounced light. Oh, that's not terrible. All right, so look up towards the card. Good, right there. Should do it. There we go. Now we're creating basically this singular, it's in her nose though, which I don't really like, but we're, hit, we're creating this like singular light source from the back that's now lighting her. So why is it hitting her nose? Let's see, so come this way with your whole body. Actually, stay there, I'm with the light. We have, we're kind of have a long lens, so in a small space. What I'm gonna do is turn this light so that it's not hitting her on the nose so much. It's gonna hit the background, but we have to compromise because we don't have much. I'd rather not hit her nose. See if that does it, actually I'm gonna go like this. So again, now I'm just reflecting light back. We'll see if this is better. It's in the shot. Okay. There we go. Now it hit the background, but the light on her is much nicer. So you get the idea. We could flag it off the background, et cetera, et cetera, but you get the concept. We've got, we're using the, 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 the physics to our favor, right? The, the, the light is going further, so it's brighter on her hair, right? Bright hair light, normal exposed face, we're creating a soft light on her face because the card, right? This is a, a two by three or 18 by 20 something or whatever. It's definitely bigger than her face, right? See, there's her face, there's the card, face, card. So it's big, it's soft, right? And that creates a really nice soft light. It basically looks almost like a soft box. Oh, and Dave wants to shoot another one. He's, he's feeling it, Dave's feeling it. Should we flag it off the background? I, I, I might have fixed it. Oh, you did. Oh, Dave might have fixed it. Good. That's always a good sign. Okay. Right? Now we're bouncing the light. So this is essentially the same thing as standing out in the sun where the light's behind her and reflecting it back. And I just want you to know that when you're standing out in the park, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to see you. I'm going to see you all in Central Park. If I see you and the sun's coming beautiful on your model's face and you do this, don't do it, right? You want your light from above, right? Make sure, because I could do that too, right? That's gonna look terrible. We want the light here. We want light to bounce onto the face. It's much more natural. So make sure that you have your, your key light, which that becomes very naturally on the face. And we've got basically, the size of the is I don't know, how big is this? Yeah, 20 by 30, how's that? It's typical poster board size, I can all Seth sells a variety of sizes. That's from the, the, this is from the mountains of CVS and Walgreens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the mountains. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult to come across this stuff. Okay, other questions? They do sell something called... You no, know, what do they call that? What do they call that board here? That, that Savage makes. The no, the boards that the... Yeah, like the beadboard. Yeah, we do sell bounce boards that are like silver and stuff, so you can get those as well. This is just a show card. Show card is basically the industry kind of standard stuff that you can buy, and then you know all your color. Because again, we talked about with the uh, uh, equipment being consistent. If you buy show card, it's always going to be the same color. So if you buy it from CVS, you know, not so much necessarily. So just keep that in mind. Because again, this is probably not neutral. It's white, but it's not necessarily neutral. So this could be adding and, and color to our shot. So if that matters to you, then you want to keep that in mind when you're doing stuff. But for the purpose of getting a nice simple shot, it works, right? Questions? No? Wow. All right. Uh-oh, I knew she was going to move. Can you talk a little bit more about Capture One and, and how you can mm -hmm. use a Capture to take a picture? Sure. Sure. So she wanted to talk about Capture One. So I. I don't use Capture One after the fact, actually. Mostly uh, you can, though. It's, it's a fully functional system. Um, I only use it for Capture because it's tremendously uh, reliable, and reliability is key when you're working commercially. So I use it for Capture. I actually mostly use uh, Lightroom for post, but um, essentially you've got all your camera controls here. So when we're shooting, and then once you have your images in, again, I have a raw image here, so I can do whatever I want. I have my 
you know, all my different curves. I have my exposure sliders. I've got my color. Lightroom also has capture. Yes, but Lightroom is not designed to capture. Oh. Thus, it is not as reliable, nor does it work as efficiently. Um, with Capture One, you can do a lot more stuff. You could take an entire eight-hour course in Capture One. Um, it's basically designed for production use. If you have Lightroom, though, and you have never tethered before, try it. You got it. It's free. You know, why not use it? Nikon also makes uh, camera control if you're a Nikon shooter, which is a very good ca uh, capture software. Uh, Canon gives you one for free that nobody ever uses, but everybody has it. Everybody who has a Canon camera has software that can capture. Um, I don't know why they don't advertise it more, but they've been giving up since day one, but uh, nobody really uses it. Um, and uh, who uses it? Somebody? You use it. Okay. So for um, for beauty shop, uh huh. This is the ideal distance. The model is that you have like six feet distance. The question is, what's the distance you you um, maintain your camera from the model? Does it matter? Okay, so that's a good question. So what's the distance that you put from the from the model? Well, you don't want to be super close, so right? So because the closer you are to somebody. The, the more distortion you're going to have. So typically what you want to do is you want to set yourself up with a lens that's going to give you, you know, if you're using a lens as I recommended, like an 85 or 105, 135, and you frame it up like a beauty shot, you'll be about the right distance away. You know, you don't, it does not like lines you draw on the ground and say this is where you stand. You need, it depends on what, you, what you're doing. If your shot is this versus this versus that, you know, you're going to be in different spots. There's no ideal place to stand. As much as uh, I would love to tell you there is, and there's probably some videos out there that are going to tell you there's a place to stand, there's no ideal place. Look through the camera. When it looks good, take the picture. That's pretty much how you do it. But if you're using the appropriate lensing, then you'll be in the right spot, right? So, so the beauty shot is basically just the face, minimum shoulders. Yeah, for this we're doing basically face shot, makeup. Yep. Yeah, I mean, beauty shots could also be body shots and stuff like that, but we can't do that to, yeah. in a live stream of the store, yes. What? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, you. Oh, okay, go ahead. All right, good. The model is very embarrassed by you guys and she has to leave. You've been, you've been staring at her too much. She's feeling a little self-conscious. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, there's no, I, I'm never, you can come every single Thursday, I will never tell you you have to do something a certain way. You don't have to shoot at F8, you don't have to use a certain lens. This is kind of a good place to start. Your style is gonna be built around how you interpret things and see things. If you wanna be a photographer and wanna work commercially especially, you need to develop your own style. I'm not gonna tell you to stand six feet away. You don't wanna make the picture I make. Make your own picture, right? So yes. what about the other light modifiers? What about the them? Rectangular or the optical? Mm-hmm. Come back every Thursday. Oh, you can come in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're asking about, you're making an extremely generic beauty, question no, about. Okay, I didn't finish the question. Yeah. For beauty shots, is it, uh, mm -hmm. I know Mm -hmm. Which is better, the cir cir circular one or the rectangle? I want you to go online and watch the live stream and re rewind back like five minutes and I'm just, I won't no, repeat no, myself. No, there is no yeah. better circle, round, square, octagon. Do what you like, okay? Uh, if I was going to use an octagon versus a beauty dish, yes, you can do that. You can use an octagon instead of an umbrella. You can use whatever you got. A softbox is going to give you more control of the edges. An umbrella is going to throw the light everywhere. That's basically the difference. The beauty dish is just smaller and more punchy, right? Beauty dish is designed to be put up nice and close, even. I can't go through every single light modifier uh, in a single session. You'll have to just watch more videos. And we have tons of videos online. Experiment with stuff, rent it, see what you like, right? I, I went years of working professionally, never using a strip soft box. Now I use them all the time. I really like them, right? Never used it. I, I didn't see a need for it. I was like, well, that does whatever a specific thing. Now I have two in my kit. I use them all the time. I love them. Right? But I wouldn't say get a strip softbox, that's your style. You, you decide what you want to use. And I definitely recommend, especially if you're local, to any big city that you rent stuff. Renting is so easy to do, and then you'll experiment and see what you like best. Right? Other questions? Nope. You sure? All right. What's the program software ah, you have? Capture One is the program I'm using. Other questions? Anything online before we wrap? Is my mom online? Is she saying anything? All right. I do not know what it costs. Yes. Like, 
You want texture? Okay, that's texture. Okay, sure. That's a good question. So that I could retouch yeah, yeah. So if going back to to what we started with, this is how it connects. You're speaking about texture. So texture is created by shadows, right? Hard light creates more abrupt dark shadows. Soft light creates more shadows that, that spread out, right? So if you're trying to reduce the amount of texture in the skin, you would want to use a softer light or a bigger light. That is going to create, because essentially, if you have uh, uh, anything, you have a, a pimple or you have a wrinkle or whatever, that's basically a place where there can be a shadow on somebody's face. So in order to eliminate that, or as much as possible, use a bigger light source. Bigger light source is going to be softer. Softer light source is going to make the shadow uh, be more washed out. Right? That makes sense? And again, it could be square, it could be whatever. It doesn't, that part doesn't matter. Bigger, smaller. Online? Cool. Nope. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so we're going to uh, sign off from the online. See you next Thursday, I guess. No, is, no nothing next Thursday, right? It's a holiday. It's a holiday next Thursday. Can I ask you a question? You can, but let me wrap off online first because they're all sitting there waiting for me to do my amazing clothes that they love to see. They, they, they wait this entire thing. I do think I have myself. Yeah. Ne next week is the cheesecake holiday where you eat cheesecake. What's, what's it called? Shavuot? Yeah, so it's very exciting. And uh, hopefully you'll all enjoy that holiday. I will not be here. Okay, so now thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Now you can get to that. Yes, what's your what question? About the film?